Welcome to another Graphics 2 tutorial. No, just kidding, I'm not going to do the whole review, or the whole uh, demo like that. Anyway, <laughs> today I want to get started about uh, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, transparency in Graphics 2, uh, some different methods you can use, and kind of go through some of the blending modes they have for transparency. So I think first what I'll do is I'll start and I'll make kind of a scene that's... Uh, uh, I'm just going to do like kind of a, a slice of land and we'll put some water over the top of it just so you can see how the different modes work. So I'm going to start by putting a rectangle in here for some ground and then I'll go over the spray can tool and I'm going to use this range in multi mode to get some really crappy grass. Nice crappy grass. Everybody loves crappy grass. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some water Actually, before I do that, oops, I want to actually get some brown speckles in here too. So let's go over to this. I'm going to shrink oh, the size down to something like four. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine. And then I'm going to grab some brown colors just so we have kind of a range. And, you know, and the reason I want to do this is the uh, the transparency isn't always really perfect when you have limited color so I kind of want to show maybe some times where it's not so great. So, let's look at my settings here. Oh that's right this is this is the radius of it. I don't use this tool all the time. We want uh, 32 will be fine for the radius to spray within. The brush I'm going to shrink down to one pixel using default brush and we're just going to sloppily put some texture in here um, just so I have some ground that's not just a standard block of color there. Okay, now we'll put in our grass. Oh, that was great. Uh, now we'll put in our grass here. My grass, your grass, everybody's grass. Uh, here, and I'm going to take... Oh, I guess I had some green in there. That won't hurt nothing. I'm going to right-click and take those out. So we'll just be using green now for the, the implied grass. It's going to be very ugly. I'm going to grow my brush a little bit here. There we go. Get our ugly green grass. The green grass grew all around, all around. There it is. Okay. So you get a really ugly, you know, kind of abstract notion of a chunk of land here. So let's begin with drawing in some water. I think this blue will be a nice uh, watercolor. And as it is, I think I'll start by drawing just a standard rectangle. You'll see that, okay, no transparency. So. That wouldn't work great for our purpose. Uh, one option you can do is you can go into uh, effects. Actually, they're all all the all the water or the transparent effects I'm going to show through here. The old school way to do it is with this sieve, and you'd set it up with something like this 50%. This doesn't work as good on modern monitors, but you can see okay, there's a, there's kind of an impression of transparency there. Um, on the old monitors it looks great because they're fuzzy and it kind of blurs it in the eye but you can see that it's just a checkerboard pattern uh, it does work pretty good the nice thing about that is it'll actually work really well in layers too so if you have a new layer let me add a layer here make sure it's blank go to this layer um, this transparency will work because the transparent part of the layer below show through so that's kind of nice too you, or, let me turn this go to this one and turn this off. You can see that it works great on the layer. Um, I want to delete that out now. And now we'll go with the more uh, realistic transparency that's not going to use that dithering or that checkerboard and that's in the effects menu here. There's a transparency button here and we have four options. We have interpolate which has an opacity component. Um, why don't we go through that first. So I'm going to select interpolate here or interpolate whatever you choose to pronounce it as. And it's set to 50%. So when we draw this, it's going to blend 50% of the... Oh, let's get out of the uh, out of the sieve. So when we draw this, it's going to blend 50% of the color with 50% of the background. And you can see, uh, it, for this, it happens to work pretty good. The problem is, is when you're doing transparency and it's calculating these blended colors, it can only work with the colors you have. So if you have a very small palette or you have a palette that doesn't have a good spread uh, between the two colors you're using, it's going to just ignore uh, more of the detail. So 
Uh, we'll say this is 50%. Um, let me draw. We might actually do this in two chunks. So that's 50% opacity. Let's try it with a little bit different and we'll see how it goes both ways. Um, <clears throat> let's do 75%. And we'll draw Shift R again right next to it. I'm going to try and keep them fairly even. You'll see, okay, we lost a little bit of detail here because we didn't have uh, some of the colors required um, to properly blend like this color, whatever that pixel is there. So as you can, you have to kind of consider the colors in your palette. It's, it's not going to be always just perfect, but it's always something you can try. The best thing to do is to kind of have a palette that has a wide range of hues and saturation and uh, value levels or, or luminosity, one, one of those. Um, the more variance you have between colors and the wider spread of colors, usually the better your the more colors you'll be able to um, blend and the computer will be able to fill in from your palette. So that was at 75. I'll put this here. I'm going to do maybe we want to do one at 25 too. Um, so let's go ahead and try the opacity at 25 percent. This also I don't think will be very good given the colors we have and I really should have done these in order but oops actually this one might turn out good so I'll shift an R for a filled rectangle I'll put one roughly the same size actually that one turned out very good so um, you can see that uh, it looks a little bit lighter the water's not so uh, isn't so overpowering in this one oops that's not 75 that's 25 percent and really this depends on the colors in your palette so it's not like Photoshop where it's going to be exact. It can only really use the colors you've set in your palette, so that's important to consider. But when you look down through here, this 25% looked good, 50% looks good, and the 75% we're starting to lose some of the fine details, and it's becoming uh, more and more opaque. Of course, I believe 100% opacity is going to be just a blue line. Let's go ahead and check that. Right-click that. I think this will probably trample over it everything but we'll check it out yeah okay so 100 percent opacity it makes sense that nothing is going to show through so if you're doing something transparent you can always try this opacity stuff and see if your palette has enough mid-tones to fill in the detail and that's one good option let's look at some other blending modes here i'm going to go into effects transparency additive blending additive blending uh, means that the pixels that you're adding and the color are added to the value underneath and it's easier to just kind of show you that than explain it here um, I believe opacity only only works with interpolate by the way at least that's the impression I get because it has a box with it so let's look at additive which is going to make things lighter okay so we got the same blue selected shift R and we're gonna look at what additive does so additive takes the pixels in the blue and makes and adds them to all the pixel values below. So you can see that um, it look it appears to be a, like almost glowing. So let's let's see what happens with a darker color like black because the values for black you have to think are zero zero and zero across the red green and blue. So technically, if we draw with black, I don't think it'll be able to do anything. See, because those zeros are all zero in additive mode it has no effect you might get some effect we'll get a little bit of effect from the grays and stuff if we go a little bit um, and actually it's not even enough and there wasn't even enough color difference between that and and this to to select a new color here for those so I'll undo that again that's one thing you have to be kinda concerned about when you're using transparency is you want a really good range of colors in between Okay, so that is additive, and I'll draw. I'm going to get out of additive mode. Well, I can actually draw it, should be able to see it. So, A, D, I'll just label this for you in case you're looking at a screenshot or something. So, that's additive mode. Let's go back into the effects, and we'll go subtractive mode. Now, subtractive mode is going to subtract the values off. Unlike additive mode, it, it should make things appear darker. So if we draw something with white, we should get no 
we should get no change because it's subtracting um, uh, <laughs> it's easier just to explain with let's go back to our blue color here where is that blue which one was I using um, shoot I can't remember oh it was that one I think so let's look at what subtractive does with the blue value should be a little bit darker see how it kind of darkens it up so it's it's try it's found some colors that it can darken but again you can't get anything darker than black so um, it wasn't able to subtract anything here and the black just kind of remains but you can see it it darkens and you can do you know multiple times it should get darker every time unless there's not enough mid tones and maybe there's not so but if you subtract white <coughs> subtractive mode it's not going to be able to do anything with that let's go ahead and relabel this I gotta turn the effects off so I can label this real quick and we'll go into draw mode so that's subtract so if you're shading things well actually the shade tool is better for shading things but if if you want to make uh, something that like sunglasses or something, you know, lenses, some sort of lenses or, or some sort of darkening glass effect, uh, subtractive might be the way you want to go because it darkens everything below. You can see it's even, it hasn't cha been able to change the brown so much because there probably wasn't a mid-tone that was close enough other than what's there, but it did grab some of the speckles and darken those, and it certainly gra grabbed some of the, uh, the grass there and darkened that. I think there's one more mode here and we'll go alpha mode and this is alpha blending and uh, quite honestly I'm not I don't remember the algorithm difference between interpolate and alpha maybe interpolates alpha with opacity I don't know but alpha I remember usually goes fairly close to interpolate unless I'm way off which I don't think I am maybe I'm so feel free to correct me down in the uh, in the comments if I am so we're gonna draw a another blue rectangle here and we'll see how this looks alright so it looks a little bit different than fifty percent interpolation so maybe it is a maybe it is it maybe it is a different algorithm although yeah there's a little bit of little bit of variance different there so anyway those are those are your different modes that you can do for blending of course you can do what they call a screen door or dithering, the old school stuff. Those don't you don't, don't usually look quite as good on a new monitor and they don't quite look quite and they don't work quite as well if the colors are very far apart. It takes it's not as um, not usually as uh, convincing that way. So what was this? Alpha L P H A all right, I'm going to zoom out here. So when we zoom out, you can kind of see that Graphics 2 does have some transparency modes. It's just kind of, um, unlike Photoshop, it's not going to usually give you an exact result because when it blends these pixels, it can really only work with the palette you've provided. So if you're going to be doing blending, you want to kind of either calculate the colors in between and add those to your palette, or you want to... Um, just have a, a huge palette with a lot of color variants in the area you're blending. Um, if you want to get the exact color between two things and you don't mind ruining your palette, or well not ruining your palette but adding another one, you can do that. I'm going to turn off effects here real quick. Transparency, turn it off. And I'm going to draw two circles here in two different colors. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so I'm gonna have we're gonna we're gonna figure out right now what the exact color is between these, and I'm willing to ruin my palette by adding one extra color in. So let's go ahead and fill, use the pipette and the fill tool, and we're gonna find the exact color of the overlap. Okay, so let's say we don't know this uh, color here. Let me just make sure I memorize. So okay, so that's that yellow, and this is that pure red. Okay, so. I want to find the color in between. I'm really, I'm willing to uh, ruin an index over this. How am I going to do that? Well, you could go to the spare page and mess with the palette there, and that'd be the cleaner way to do it. Then map the color back over. 
but for the sake of just finding the color I'm going to ruin a few parts of my palette here. So the first thing we need to do is select this yellow. I'm going to copy it to an area I'm not using. This pink is fine. And the pure red I think was this one here. I'll copy that and I'll paste it here. Now I'm going to drag my mouse over here using the left and I'm going to say spread and this is should be the the color right in between those so if I fill that in yeah that looks pretty good it's, it's fairly convincing that that's a color directly between those so if you want to find the exact color between two things you can always and you're willing to adjust your palette you can always uh, put them in there and you can um, find that transparency that way let's do one other thing here let's say that I want a range of um, Let's say I want I want a, a ramp of five different transparency levels. So I'll copy here, I'll paste there, and then we'll do spread, and it'll spread between those two. So now we have kind of we could do a transparency because we have red fading into yellow here. We could have multiple implied levels of transparency, or maybe um, what am I trying to say? Levels of opacity. Uh, they'd be implied. So. I'm just going to draw with a brush kind of here and we'll kind of get that and anyway, let's make it a little bit bigger here that's good so we'll start with yellow okay and I use this uh, bracket key to move the the uh, closing bracket key to move the next one down so now you can see we have you know we have this nice gradient and we could have multiple levels of you know kind of implied opacity that way too so I think that's going to do it for this tutorial um, I hope you learned something, especially uh, if anything, just keep in mind that the transparency effects are great when they work, but depending on your palette, they may or may not work as well as you expect. So um, I hope you have a nice day and keep doing art.